it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens and today's video is going to be focused around the pH of your hydroponic systems. Specifically, today we're going to be talking about how to lower the pH of your nutrient solutions using acidic solutions like pH down. I am going to be performing a couple experiments during today's video. I'm really only using two primary products. The first is a digital pH meter, and if you don't already have one, you absolutely need to get one for your hydroponic system. I will link this one in the description below. And the second product I'm going to be using is General Hydroponics pH Down Solution. There are a few versions of pH Down out on the market. This is the only version that I've ever used. I've had great results and it's super affordable for my budget. So for me, there's been no reason to switch off. If this is not a product that you enjoy, there are a couple other options out there and I will link them in the description below. Starting out with the basics of pH. pH is a measurement of how alkaline or acidic a certain solution is. So in this circumstance, we're talking about water and your nutrient solution in your hydroponic system. The pH levels of your nutrient solution can dramatically affect the overall health of your plant. Most plants wanna grow in a pH range between 5.5 and 6.5. And anytime your pH levels fall outside of that range, it can directly affect the overall health of your plant. In hydroponic systems, the most common issue that we run into is that the pH level is too high. So we need to bring it back down into that more acidic range of 5.5 to 6.5 to create the ideal growing conditions for our plants. If you live in the city and have city water, your water is likely going to be as close to neutral as possible. So you will likely need to lower your pH directly out of the faucet. If you're using tap water that's connected to a well water system, then your water is likely a little more acidic, but it still will need to be brought down to get you in between that 5.5 and 6.5 range for your plants. Now, what happens if we don't do anything to our pH levels? What if we just leave the level exactly as it is and keep it a little higher than what our plant prefers? The first thing that you're gonna notice is likely a yellowing at the tips of your leaves or just an overall decrease in vibrancy of your plant. This is because your plant's ability to absorb nutrients when the pH level is too high decreases significantly, which means no matter how many nutrients you put in your nutrient solution, your plant's ability to absorb those nutrients and convert them into food decreases. When this happens, you'll start to see the health of your plants fail slowly over time, and eventually the productivity of your plant will suffer, which means the total amount of fruit or produce or leafy greens that your plant can produce will decline over time. Additionally, if your pH levels are too high or too low, it can affect the overall health of the roots of your plants. Most commonly we see root rot or just a decrease in overall new root production. Now that we know the fundamentals of pH levels and how they affect the growth of your plants, let's go in depth on talking more about how to measure our pH levels and bring those levels into the recommended ranges. Before we can make any changes to the pH of our nutrient solution, we first need to be able to accurately measure what the pH currently is. To test this out today, I just have a pitcher of tap water directly from our house and a digital pH meter. I live in a rural area and we have well water out here, so this came directly out of our tap, but it is from our groundwater here in the area. Historically, I've heard that we have more acidic water, but I was a little surprised by the testing that I did today, so let's try it out together. If you do have a digital pH meter like this, you'll notice that there's three buttons on it. This is a three-in-one functionality. It can actually test EC, pH, and my water temperature, which is super helpful when it comes to hydroponics. The top button that I have here is going to be my on-off button. That middle button that you see there is the hold button, which is what's going to hold your results while you have it in the water. And the bottom button down here is your mode button that can fluctuate between EC, pH, and temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my meter on, and then I wanna click the mode button until I can get it to that pH setting. It's reading all zeros now, which means I'm ready to go ahead and measure the pH of my water. This is about a gallon of water straight out of the tap. I have not added a single thing to it, so let's see what I measure at. I'm gonna keep my finger on that hold button so I can hold the results. When you do stick your meter into your solution or water just to measure it, you want to hold it in there until you see those numbers stop fluctuating. When you first put it in there, you'll see it kind of read a couple different readings. So wait until that level stops fluctuating, then click your hold button to save that result, and then you can go ahead and pull it right out. 
and I am seeing a reading of 7.52, which means I'm not even neutral. I'm actually a little bit alkaline. So I definitely need to adjust the pH of my water so I can get it within the range that my plants like. Now I am going to go straight into adding my pH down to lower the pH of my pitcher here, but just note that if we were doing this for a hydroponic solution right now, we would go ahead and add the nutrients first. Any nutrient solution is going to affect your pH levels, so you want to add in your nutrient solution and any other additives that you're adding to your hydroponic system before you measure the final pH levels. My nutrients that I use in my system tend to naturally bring my levels down a little bit more. So if I adjusted my pH first and then added my nutrient solution, I could run into an issue where my pH level is actually too low. So make sure that you add all of your additives into your system first and then take your pH measurements. But for today's sake, we're gonna go ahead and lower the pH of this pitcher. I have my General Hydroponics pH down solution. The solution can come in a container of this size. It also comes in a gallon sized jug. A little bit goes a long way. So if you just have a basic home hydroponic setup, a bottle of this size should last you for quite a while. Now the instructions on the quantity of pH down to use are actually really vague. The bottle states, the quantity necessary for pH adjustment will vary depending on the strength of the nutrient and the purity of the water used to mix the nutrient. So basically what they're saying is there's too many variables for them to give any sort of doses to start with. Today, we're going to give a brief outline of what to use because my water is almost neutral. So we're dealing with an almost 7.0 water and we don't have any nutrients in it. This is approximately one gallon of water and I'm gonna start out with a half a teaspoon of the pH down, mix it up and see where that leaves us in our pH levels. We are at a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump that in. The other thing, because it's such a small amount, I actually like to scoop up a little bit of the water and kind of rinse my cup out just to make sure that I got all of it in there. Next, we wanna make sure we give it a good mix. This is just a random bamboo stick I had. Okay, so half a teaspoon of my pH down in about one gallon of water. Let's see where that leaves us. Keep in mind 7.52 was my measurement for just pure water. Okay, and we are already down to a 5.14, which is actually lower than most of my plants would prefer. So as you can see, just a half teaspoon in one gallon of water significantly reduce the overall pH. Now, of course, with your hydroponic system, it's likely larger than a one gallon system, so you have a little bit more room, but it just goes to show you that you really wanna start out with a half teaspoon or less and move up slowly with those increments. Otherwise, you'll run the risk of reducing the pH by too much. Now that we've seen this in action with just pure water, let's move on over to my hydroponic system and take a look at where I'm measuring there. I have my hydroponic systems next to me here. I have not tested the pH on these guys in over a week, so I'm curious to see where they're at currently. Just for reference, these are 3.5 gallon bucket systems. This is a DWC or deep water culture hydroponic system. And these particular models are sold by HTG Supply and I absolutely love their Bubble Boy products. These are really, really good for beginners. So if you're just looking to get into it, this is a great system for you. I've shifted the tops on each of my containers and I'm just gonna take measurements first and see where we're at. All right, in my very first one here, this is one of my pepper plants and he is about a month old so far. And we are just a little bit high. We're at 6.68. Next we have our tomato plant. And this guy again is just slightly high. He's at 6.55. I usually like to keep my tomatoes a little closer to six. My herb four banger top is actually at a 6.95. So he's higher than the rest. And my other herb bucket was even higher at a 7.17. 
This is actually really interesting because I put the same exact water on the same exact day with the same amount of nutrients in each of these buckets. And the, this affected their pH in different ways at different rates. And I think it's directly related to the size of the plant. So obviously my tomato plant here is pretty big. My pepper plant is also quite large, but my herb plants are still in their infancy and they're really small. So they're just not absorbing as much nutrients as quickly as my larger plants are. So knowing that these two buckets are really, really close to being accurate and these two buckets are actually a little more on the high side, I'm going to start with my half teaspoon increments. I suspect that these two behind me will need a full teaspoon to accommodate 3.5 gallons of water and I anticipate that these guys shouldn't need much more than that half teaspoon measurement. Instead of stirring these ones up, I'm going to turn the bubblers back on and let them do their job for a couple minutes. Now that the pH down has had the opportunity to really get blended in with that water, let's see where our measurements are at. My tomato plant here was exactly at 5.8, so I really don't want to lower that one anymore. The rest of the other three here were still slightly over 6.5, so I'm going to add just a little bit more of my pH down and try to get those a little bit closer to the 6 mark. Okay, let's see where we're at. My peppers are right at 5.96, which is perfect. My first herb container is at 5.99, which is as close to six as I'm ever gonna get. And somehow my other herb container is at exactly 5.99 as well. These are spot on. This is exactly where I want to keep my pH levels. Now, of course, next week when I change out my water, re-add my nutrients and all of the other things I do on a weekly basis, this whole process gets so much easier if you just incorporate it into your weekly routine as a part of your overall hydroponics maintenance. pH down is a really effective tool when it comes to lowering the pH of your hydroponic systems quickly and naturally. Now the ingredients on pH down is primarily phosphoric acid, which is of course acidic. There's also a little bit of citric acid in there and a couple other things, but the primary ingredient is acid. So knowing this, it is a corrosive substance and if you get it in your eyes, on your skin, or ingest it, it can be harmful. So keep this out of the reach of any pets or children and when you do use it, just use caution. Don't rub your eyes afterwards. Don't let it sit on your skin. You will start to notice some irritation. Most of the solutions that can lower pH do include substances like phosphoric acid or citric acid that we can easily get on our own and create our own solution. However, in my opinion, the pH down by General Hydroponics is so affordable that it doesn't really make sense for me to DIY it. So I do recommend just adding this into your typical orders when you purchase your plant nutrients. That was my quick overview on pH levels in your hydroponic solution, how to adjust those pH levels, and how that can affect the overall health of your plants. The importance of overall pH cannot be overstated when it comes to hydroponics gardening. And to be honest, between EC levels and pH levels, these two measurements were two of the things that initially turned me away from hydroponics because I just don't like to get too scientific with my gardening methods. As someone who truly hates to measure out anything and do anything in exact amounts, I can honestly say that this process is a really, really easy one to master, and it is really important when it comes to hydroponic gardening. Don't let that fact deter you from taking on hydroponic gardening. This is such a fun hobby to do, especially during the winter months when you can't grow anything outside, and you'll be amazed at just how quickly you can get your plants to produce fruits and vegetables to eat in your own kitchen. This video is one of many in my hydroponic gardening series. This series is aimed towards beginners or those who are unsure if they want to get into hydroponics or not. I start at the very beginning with seed starting and go all the way through systems, lighting, nutrients, you name it, it's in that playlist. If this is something that you're interested in learning more about, I highly encourage you to subscribe to our channel and set up your alerts so that you know when the next video comes out. If you have any questions at all on the hydroponic setups that I showed you today, on pH levels or pH down, please leave them in the comments section below.
I love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video today. I can't tell you how much it means to me when you spend time on our channel. And as always, I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.